Welcome to the Adventures in Alchemy podcast, where we share tips, techniques, and true stories to support you in using the law of attraction and alchemy to create magic and live the life of your dreams. Here's your host, the founder of DailyAlchemy.com, Michelle Martin Dobbins. Hey there, it is Michelle Martin Dobbins from Daily Alchemy. And today I want to talk to you about offerings, which is something I never thought I would be talking about. But before I do, I just want to briefly mention that if you're listening to this in current time, like, what is it, July 24th, um, or on thereabouts in 2017, I have a special offer going on. You have to get on my list to be part of this offer. So to do that, go to dailyalchemy.com. And there is a thing at the very top that has a freebie, getting your happy back. There's also a magical freebie vault that has all kinds of PDFs, planners, manifesting planners, um, working with the moon planners, just all, all kinds of really good stuff that you can get for free. And when you do that, then you'll get to learn about the gold life bundle, which is like so much of my classes put together at a really, really, really great rate that you don't want to miss. So, and that's only going to be going on for two weeks. It's opening shortly just for two weeks because I'm going to start some new fun classes. So don't miss it. Go to dailyalchemy.com today, get on the list and you'll get to learn all about it. So back to offerings. I don't know about you, but offerings to me, brought back like the Sunday school memories. If you came up in the Christian tradition of, you know, you would learn about Old Testament giving offerings to the gods and that, you know, Jesus was supposed to be like the last offering that no more physical sacrifice offerings were necessary. So like to me, offering brought up, you know, the word sacrifice. It was not something that was fun and interesting to me. And I never really thought about it too, too much. Um, but I was looking up the definition when I was kind of preparing for this podcast. And, you know, the, some of the definitions are actually not that bad. A thing offered, especially as a gift or contribution. A thing produced or manufactured for entertainment or sale. <laughs> so basically, you know, it's an offering. When I tell you I have the Gold Life Bundle, that's just an offering that I have <laughs> for people to purchase. Sometimes it's a gift. Sometimes it's for purchase, right? This podcast is an offering to you that are, lis- you know, the people who listen to it. <laughs> oh, no, I'm going get, getting ahead of myself. A thing offered as a religious sacrifice or a token of devotion, a contribution, especially of money to a church. So, you know, an offering to me, I got this negative connotation to it. And when I looked at the definition, there's really a lot, you know, a token of devotion. You know, how can that be bad? (laughs) So, you know, I was not a fan, though. And I'm going to tell you that over the past, it's not been quite a year. I feel like it's been at least six months, maybe a little bit more, I've gotten much more involved in offerings. And no, I have not been taking out chickens in my backyard or anything like that at all. But I got involved in a class where offering, giving offerings were part of the suggested assignments. And I kind of balked at it. I I thought it was silly and I didn't want to do it. But you know, usually if I sign up for a class and I think that the premise is good, I'm going to just go ahead and do it and see what happens. So I chose to do that. And I'll share with you in a little bit kind of how that affected me. But I wanted to just talk a little bit more about offerings. And I'm totally not an expert in this field, but it's something that a lot of people do a lot more than I really thought about. And sometimes we do give, you know, like, offerings that we don't even consider necessarily offerings, you know, and one of the big ones, if you come from the Christian tradition that they talk about in the Bible is when Abraham was asked to offer up Isaac. And, you know, if you know that story, Isaac was his son and he took him out there and, you know, put him on the thing to the fire or the place where he was going to burn and 
kill his son as an offering to God because God had asked him to. And then God's like, no, all I needed to know is that you were willing to do it. And that one begs for some interesting metaphysical interpretation. And I won't go too deeply into it, but I always interpret the Bible like I interpret dreams, like everybody in it is you or an aspect of your personality. So sometimes it's like if you're willing to give up something, then you're not going to be asked to. And and there's like much more to that story. And I'm not going to go into it because if I do, I'll be here forever and I won't get back to the offerings. But a lot of Jewish people also still give offerings because they don't follow the New Testament tenement, tenant that the Christian people do. And they even, they have a thing called, and I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, but it's like caparat, where a chicken or money is prayed over and given to atone for their sins. So if the money is, is obviously given to the church or charity and the chicken is given to the poor. It's sacrificed and given to the poor. My daughter has been studying hoodoo, actually no voodoo, but we spent some time in New Orleans a couple times and we've met some people and we've both gotten interested in it, her a little bit more so than me. But um, if you go to a place where they practice this, you will see a lot of altars and offerings will be left on the altars for God's saints, Marie Laveau, who was a voodoo priestess, who is also very big in the Catholic Church. She's quite revered in New Orleans. And so uh, we went to a ceremony where her statue was there and they were leaving offerings for her. There are a lot of deities um, that they leave offerings for. And, you know, it just depends on she was a hairdresser, so people will bring hairdressing items, they will bring candles, they will bring foods, they will bring flowers, lots of different things. Some of the other deities that they work with, or the priests or the saints in hoodoo and voodoo, they will leave whiskey, they will leave cigarettes, um, apparently some of it was like that. And in that case, like the offering is given, and you know, it's considered you like if you take it back, then you're kind of like stealing. Like if you put a cigarette on that altar and then later on you decide you're going to smoke it, that's like a no-no. And, you know, some of the people in the hoodoo voodoo do it on that level of we're doing this to make them happy so that they give us boons and good luck in our life. And the same, it's kind of like the Old Testament, you know, we give to the gods and, you know, like i don't know too much. Uh, my daughter's been reading a book on like North religion and, you know, kind of like the Vikings and, you know, how they gave, they gave sacrifices as well. And sometimes, you know, you go back in even the Mayan culture, the, a lot of these cultures, they would even sacrifice people to appease the gods. And that's really not what I'm talking about when I get into offerings, because that's, There are so many levels to things, and that's like kind of like that first baby step level of like, I'm giving this to you to make you happy. And when I look at offerings and what I've learned, it's more like you're not necessarily giving it to God, but you're giving it to yourself, to your own higher self. Well, before I get too far, come back to um, in the Hindu religion. There is, um, when they do a puja, which is kind of like similar to a Catholic mass, but they will offer fruit and flowers and different things to the the deities. Usually there's a lot of fruit involved and it's blessed. And, you know, unlike in the hoodoo culture where when you give those offerings, you don't take them back in this one, like it's blessed and it's kind of like the energy of that deity gets in the fruit and then the fruit is cut open and passed around and everybody partakes of it. And it's kind of almost like a type of sacrament, but it's, you know, the fruit's been blessed. I don't know a lot about Chinese culture, but I do know a lot of that Chinese culture, people in the Chinese culture do offerings for their ancestors. So it's something that doesn't belong just to one culture or one religion. It's just something that is so far spread And 
So I really thought about that when I was like, I just kind of wanted to dismiss this, but I'm like, so many people do it. There must be something to it. And, you know, you could look back and say, well, they were just silly and they didn't realize that you don't have to give God something to get something. So I decided, though, to have an open mind and give offerings. So I started and I will be honest, I have... For several years, my family and I started kind of celebrating. We started with doing the Day of the Dead and then just kind of evolved into our own way of celebrating because it felt like we first made sugar skulls and things like that because we went to Mexico and we just really thought it was a beautiful thing. But then it kind of felt like it wasn't necessarily the way we wanted to do it, but it was great because it opened that up, but we didn't want to like culturally appropriate. And so we, um, it just felt, uh, but we do in October set up an ancestral altar in our house. And part of what we do is offerings for our ancestors at that time. We know what a lot of these relatives liked and, you know, like if Dr. Pepper is a thing that's going to be there, um, you know, their favorite drinks, their favorite foods are placed out there for them. And part of, we're still kind of learning what works for us in that area, but we love taking a time that time of year to feel close to our ancestors. And we've kind of started evolving that more in a much more simple way during the whole year. Um, we're still kind of in a process of playing with that, but I started doing just a very simple daily offering to two, one to my higher self. And I just leave out a bowl of nice, clean spring water every morning. And sometimes I'll pick a little flower from the yard and put in it. And then whenever the next day comes, I take that and I either pour it like in the base of a tree out in our yard, or sometimes I pour it in the plants in my house because I consider that it's been there. I've set it out there as an intention to nourish my soul and my higher self and to connect with what, you know, that part of me that knows everything I need to know. So I feel like it's been blessed water. And then also I use um, incense and do a daily offering to the nature spirits. And so I've been doing that for quite a while. And it's a very strange thing because like now it's just, it's a part of my routine. And if I don't do it, I miss it. And it just, it makes an energy shift. It's like, it's hard to explain <laughs> But just knowing that I am taking that time out to acknowledge, and for me, it really just is acknowledging my higher self and, and, and also like God, the energy, the creative force energy in the world every day and the local energy that is part of that. Cause to me, it's all one, but it it kind of just shifts something in your energy when you do that on a daily basis. And it's like meditation for me. It's hard for me to explain why meditation works and why when I meditate, I get into flow and things work and things go easier and problems come up, but they're just solved easier. Giving offerings has felt that way to me as well. And I talked last week, if you listen to that podcast about making a vow, and that made a big shift in my energy too. It's like lately I've just been learning about things that I've been really resistant when I've studied spirituality. Anything that had the word sacrifice in it, I was like, no, 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 no. But sometimes you're making these choices for your own growth. You know, it's not about, I don't do that to get God to give me special favors. I do that to have a practice of devotion that grows me spiritually. And I know it sounds really weird. Like you set out a bowl of water every day, you burn some incense, you set some intentions and do a little prayer and that makes your life go better. (laughs) 
Strangely enough, yes, it does. And, and like I said, this is something that I've just been doing for a short time. So, you know, I haven't shared it before because it really hasn't been a long-term practice, but I'm, I'm interesting to, interested to see, like, if I do this for years and years and years, like how it's going to change me. And I just started to say, you know, I made a vow that I talked about doing that, like making a vow with my life. And that made such a big energy shift. And it almost feels like it connects with these offerings. Like when I'm making these offerings, I'm thinking about like, this is what I vowed to do. And, you know, you don't have to give an offering of anything tangible. You don't have to put out a bowl. I mean, you don't have to give offerings, period. But I think, you know, it's one of those strange things that you are giving offerings to the world, whether or not you consider them to be offerings. You're going to work, you're taking care of children. It's like everything you do is an offering, kind of like every thought you think is a prayer. (laughs) So, you know, might as well be intentional about some of them, right? Or as many of them as you can. And so, you know, you can offer up your love to the world. That is a beautiful offering. You can do that when you start your meditation in the morning. So you don't have to necessarily buy any incense. You don't have to go out and get spring water and do any of the stuff that I'm doing. I'm really doing this almost as an experiment to see what it does. But I wanted to start talking about it in a podcast because it has made a positive impact in my life. But, you know, I do believe just considering what you are offering to the world is a big thing. And, you know, taking that little intention to say, you know, I'm offering my love here. I'm offering my devotion here. I'm offering my service here. It's just that little shift in thinking can really change your energy and how you feel. And why is that important? Because fulfillment is a big deal in life. I don't know if you guys have been watching the news, And have you seen, like, and I'm not really big in the music scene, but I've seen that two pretty famous um, magicians, (laughs) musicians, have recently taken their life. And, you know, it's heartbreaking because they were trying to, I mean, they were, like, living the dream, right? And, you know, you see sometimes these people who, on the outside of their lives, look beautiful and wonderful and like they've made it but and I'm not gonna say like in this case who knows what the situation was but a lot of times people can check mark off all their goals and they're still not happy because they don't have that sense of fulfillment and if you can take what you're doing in the world that that anyway, as an offering, and that gives you a connection with yourself, with other people, with God, if you believe in God, the creative power, it can be a big deal. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know how else to say it. It can just totally change how you feel when you get up in the morning. It can make you want to get up in the morning and offer, you know, your energy, your love, your service to the world. And like this kind of sounds really scary and it just came up as I was writing up some notes to share with you when I was going to sh- do this podcast and I was like you know maybe we consider off our life as an offering and how we live it and you're like you know like offer your life ooh that's not you know I will someone who went from 6 months ago not even thinking about giving offerings for anything and then offer my life. But here's the thing, offering your life would just mean living it fully as a gift to the universe, as a gift to yourself, as a gift to other people. Because if you step up and you claim your power and you live full out as the magnificent energy soul that you are, guess what? (laughs) Not a lot of people do that. I mean, like probably less than 1%, right? Right. I mean, I know I don't do that. I strive to do that. And sometimes I forget to strive to do that. Like I got all in a twirl for the past year until like two or three months ago because I got scared of living full out. I mean, it's not easy, right? But it's fulfilling and it's 
it is a gift to the world because if you're willing to do it, if you're willing to step out and do it, you make it easier for the next person. I know I use this example all the time, but you know, the person who ran the, it's a four minute mile, three minute mile. I'm really bad at this, but you know, once someone broke that threshold, then all these other people come behind breaking that threshold. So, you know, Offer up the fact that you're going to live your life full out and then you're going to break thresholds not only for yourself, but for everybody coming behind you. And, you know, (laughs) there are a lot of people who are walking zombies like the zombie apocalypse. It is already here. And I know because sometimes I get up and I choose to be a zombie that day and That's usually never a conscious choice, but sometimes I do. I just get up and I go through the motions, but I, that's what daily alchemy is for me. I have things that I put in place. I'm going to look up and I'm going to see, oh yeah, I get up, I meditate. I do, you know, I do these things. I have reminder notes everywhere, practices, giving offerings that remind me to wake up and not be a zombie. It's really easy to be a zombie in our world and just go through the motions. But going through the motions, it doesn't give you the beautiful life that you want. And, that, <laughs> you know, you, I know it's scary, right? It's really scary to offer yourself up to the world, to put yourself out there. Because So many people are zombies, but look around the people who offer themselves who like full out go, I'm going to do whatever like lights me up, whatever makes me passionate, you know, and I don't really know these people's lives and, you know, some of them probably don't have what I would necessarily, you know, what people would consider a spiritual practice. Like the first person who pops into my mind right now is Elon Musk. Because that dude, like, whatever he thinks is going to be great for the world, he's going to jump right on it, which is awesome. And to me, (laughs) whether or not he has any spiritual practice, he definitely has a practice of following his intuition and taking action and offering himself to the world, offering his genius to the world. And you have a genius, so offer it to the world. (laughs) And... You know, I get that it's hard and it's scary because it's hard and it's scary for me too. And it's something that you, just because you do it today, doesn't mean it's going to be easy to do tomorrow. You get up and you do it. What makes it easier? The more you do it, the more you take time to have for me. And, you know, obviously not for everybody. And so, but for me, the spiritual practice makes it easier. And I like the pomp and circumstance I don't think it's necessary. Like, I don't think you have to get up and put out a bowl of water and burn some incense or do any kind of thing like that for your offerings and set up altars all around your house like I have. I like them. They bring me joy. And that's one of the main reasons I do it. I mean, they're a practice of devotion and they bring me joy. They make me feel connected with the non-physical, which is something that I like. I believe that we're in a physical world and that is always going to be important as long as we are alive and in this physical world. So I, I balance that. I'm not someone who's going to sit in a cave for 20 years, but I definitely, I like to connect to that. And, you know, if that's not your thing, that's totally okay. But That's what daily alchemy is to me, like finding those spiritual practices that help you gain fulfillment in the physical world and vice versa, how to live in the physical world in a way that connects you with the non-physical and um, just balances everything out. So I've gone on a little bit of a tangent there, but I would love to know, like, what do you think about offerings? Have you Do you do that as part of your spiritual practice? And look at your life. You, I'm telling you what, whether or not you name it as an offering, you give an offering because you work in the world. Your work in the world is an offering. The care that you give your spouse, your family, your friends is an offering. When you make a meal, it's an offering. So just 
set some intentions around those offerings and the blessings that they're going to give to the world. And I would love to hear what you think about offerings, if you've considered that before, if it's something that's already a regular practice of yours, go to dailyalchemy.com and um, there you'll find all the links for Facebook, Twitter, even if you want to shoot me an email, that's cool too. And while you're there, if you're not subscribed to my newsletter, which gets you lots of free goodies, do that so that you can get on my list and learn about the Gold Life Bundle because it's only here for two weeks. All right, namaste and big hugs until next time. Would you like some help creating more magic in your life? I've got a ton of freebies and goodies for you. They're all tucked away inside my magical freebie vault. You can get free access though. You just have to go to www.dailyalchemy.com forward slash magical dash freebie dash vault. Again, that's dailyalchemy.com forward slash magical dash freebie dash vault. And when you get there, you can just plug in your name and email and you will get instant access to all kinds of goodies. There are daily and weekly manifesting planners, the how to shift your vibe in five minutes e-kit that has audios and a workbook. There are moon manifesting planners and daily love lists and money trackers and all kinds of goodies right there. I didn't want to make you have to go to a bunch of different pages and sites and wait for certain freebies to come out. So I just took all of my freebies and put them in one place where you could just sign up one time and download any of them that you want at any time that you needed. So you can just head on over to dailyalchemy.com forward slash magical dash freebie dash vault and download them today. Have a magical day. Thanks for listening to the Adventures in Alchemy podcast. Connect with me on thedailyalchemy.com or Facebook at facebook.com slash Michelle Dobbins author. Join us next time for even more magical life tips.